Hey guys, this is No Solution. I'm Scott. And what we have today is some more blowing off the dust, going through some old stuff in the collection, kind of reevaluating it, seeing what I think of it now, and ultimately if I'm going to keep it. Uh, but I thought I'd also go into uh, collect, uh, Completest Corner, something I did a little while ago, where um, I buy something kind of non-essential and then let you know what I think and if, if it's worth getting. So we're going to talk about this today, the Queensryche Operation Mindcrime Deluxe box set here uh, on CD. So it's a nice kind of hardback slipcase. And then inside we've got a hardcover book. Um, it's got some kind of brief liner notes and then the lyrics and, you know, some pictures and whatnot. Um, Honestly, and it's pretty thin. I was I was a little I was a little bit disappointed in what this book had to offer. Um, and then there's a separate kind of uh, fold out thing with all the discs in it. So we've got we've got four CDs and a DVD in here. Um, so you have the uh, the album, obviously, and then you have. Uh, Disc 2 is called Overseeing the Operation. We have an extended version of I Don't Believe in Love. The Mission, live from Hammersmith Odeon, in London. My Empty Room, live from London in 94. And then there's an interview. And then there's a weird track that's like uh, a bunch of like song snippets, like strung together i don't even understand what it's supposed to be um it's pretty useless in my opinion i don't i don't even know why it exists the interviews are kind of cool to hear once you know you're not going to go back to those um the uh bonus tracks here are from b-sides from both uh the empire and the promised land era which i already had but you know not everybody was a psycho and bought all those cd singles uh, then we have disc three is Operation Live, Live Crime from London from uh, November 15th, 1990. And then disc four is the Operation Live Crime show from Madison and I don't know, another show in Wisconsin, uh, May 10th through 12th, 1991. So that was originally issued on this. The Operation Live Crime box, which came out in, I believe, 91, end of 91. Yeah. So this is my original copy. Um, and this is the, <laughs> the so obsolete VHS and cassette box set here. Um, but... Has some good memories. I was so stoked when this was coming out because I'd seen the tour and I was so uh, just so excited to have a, a document of it. Uh, yes, Lacrosse, Wisconsin was the other show. Um, so this was the Empire tour, but the they kind of did two sets, and the second set was Operation Minecraft Live. And this has a really cool book in it, which actually has is I think is is better than the uh, the new book. It's got all the lyrics and some write-ups and some fold-out posters. Sorry, I'll try to... I'm not very good at showing this when I'm facing the camera, but... Um, so, yeah. So, you get all this stuff. The VHS had all the videos that were associated with the album with kind of like some storyline stuff. If you know anything about the album, it's a, it's a concept album, so there's an ongoing story throughout, and that kind of gives you some some clues into the story. So the DVD has that uh, original VHS stuff and also has, um, or no, I'm sorry. There's a separate VHS called uh, Video Mind Crime that had all the videos. So that was not what was in there. My apologies. That was just the live show. This has both of those on the DVD. And it's it's basically a VHS rip. They didn't do anything to clean it up. It's you know full frame and standard definition. Um, I like having everything in in one spot on this. Would I recommend it? 
not really. I, I waited until the price was something I was comfortable with, and it was still like $60. And it's one of my favorite albums, so I didn't feel that bad about it. But the mastering on this, I kind of prefer the original. It seems a little too bright and kind of uh, kind of hard on the ears compared to the original mix. And, uh, the, you know, the live shows are cool, but you're getting you're basically getting two versions of the same live show. Uh, the B-sides are, not, are nothing to really get that excited about. Um, you know, and then you get the DVD, which is what it, what it is. But uh, it's a cool package, but I would say if you're not a freaking psycho for this record, I would not recommend dropping the $60 plus on it. Uh, okay, so we're... Oh, jeez. I thought this would be a quick one. I'm sorry. Let's get into it then. Uh, so a few that I picked out from my collection I hadn't listened to in a long time. We'll start with uh, Diabolique, The Black Flower. Came out in 1999. This band was formed in 1995 after the demise of Liars in Wait, which came out of the other Swedish uh, metal band Grotesque. So I guess most famous for uh, Christian Wayland being in it, who is also known as Necrolord, very famous artist. Uh, metal metal cover artist. So this is super, super goth, hard rock. And I remember, ha I had good good memories of this, but I didn't listen to it in so long. Wow, did I grow out of this. Uh, I, I was so bored listening to this again. Um, yeah, the songs just hang around way too long. They're all like five minutes and should be three. I guess if you're super into the vibe of this, then that would be cool. But I was just kind of waiting for each song to be over. Um, the vocals are super monotone and very boring to me. V very much in that gothy kind of low talking uh, uh, style. But man, this just did not work for me. I was so bummed because I had such good memories of this, but I hadn't listened to it in so long. I guess there's a reason I hadn't listened to it because... Sometimes you gotta leave the memories alone. Uh, very shimmering guitars kind of reminded me of Angelo uh, Badalamente's uh, film scores. Uh, yeah, I mean, I know people bag on him, but him occasionally rocks. <laughs> this does not rock at all. It's, I, 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 wow. I was really bummed how I, I did not enjoy this anymore. So, yeah, Diabolique. I guess it was a product of his time or a product of my time. That's that's gonna have to go. Uh, next we have a uh, Desecrator, Metal for Demons. So this was touted kind of as a supergroup of Norwegian extreme metal people at the time. Uh, this came out in '98. I remember hearing that like the enslaved guys were involved in this, but I get I I think this was more just like a like a fun project that they would people would dip in and out of. I don't think any of those guys are on this. Um, the first song metal for demons is kind of fun, but then it just kind of goes all over the place. We got like, like techno stuff going on. Um, just, they go all over different styles. We've got like some, some, uh, some bluesy kind of country ish songs. Uh, yeah, man, this is just not, this is not work. Uh, even for just a fun, goofy record, uh, I don't think I can justify keeping this. I don't know. I think I just kept it because of the supposed um, pedigree of the people in it. But yeah, this this is not for me. Uh, right then we got get rid of those notes. Get that, get that out of here. Frantic bleep. Uh, the Sense Apparatus. This came out in 2005. They were formed in 2001. This is a Norwegian project from Norway. Now, this was on the End Records. And if you are familiar with the End Records from mid-2000s, you might have an idea of kind of where this is. Kind of uh, a midpoint between like avant-garde and extreme metal. So, I hadn't listened to this in a while. I wasn't sure really what to expect. This is prog metal. A bit, a bit avant-garde and spacey, kind of technical, uh, but not alienating at all. Uh, I really did enjoy listening to this. 
most of the vocals are really smooth, clean vocals. There are some harshes like sprinkled in there. Um, I would compare this kind of like mid period Arcturus and, uh, Agneta of Matter Mortem does some backing vocals on this. So I, I'm a, I'm a sucker for her. So I did enjoy that quite a bit. So yeah, this is a really fun project. I've seen that they are supposedly still active and there's a bunch, I guess a bunch more Matter Mortem guys were, uh, involved in this later after this album, but they've never put out anything else. So I, I would assume this project is done, but. Yeah, if you're into like that kind of mid two thousands weirdo Norwegian almost extreme metal, I would say uh, check it out. I'm sure you can find it pretty cheap. A lot of the end record stuff is available dirt cheap now. So, frantic bleep, I give that a thumbs up. And then I have Garden of Worm here. This is their self self titled debut from 2010. Uh, this came out in Shadow Kingdom. Their Finnish formed in 2003. Uh, really fun. This is, uh, Doom with uh, kind of some prog touches, but not prog as in, like, showy and techy. Um, more like just, like, changing sections and, and, uh, changing things up within the songs. Um, clean vocals. More, there, there is a, a trippy kind of, uh, heavy psych vibe on here that I, I have read that they continued with further, um, as as they progressed. I, this is the only thing I've heard, so I, I can't really speak to that too much, just what I've read. Uh, there's a lot of heavy riffs with alternating with like mellower passages that build back up to the heavy parts again. Um, it really effective um, and never boring. I, this is, you know, sometimes I know Doom can get a bit like samey, but this, this changes it up quite nicely. And um, yeah, I definitely want to check out more of Garden of Worm. So I believe this first one is probably still available fairly cheap everywhere, but the other stuff I'm not sure about, so I'll have to check that out. But yeah, Garden Worm, I'll give that one a thumbs up. And uh, where are we at? 12 minutes? I'll just throw this in briefly. I just picked this up in Montreal for cheap. The uh, Apocalypse. Sorry, it's in French. Livra 66, chapter premiere, something like that. It's a Season of Mist comp, um, a label comp, basically. So the first disc, who cares? It's just, you know, it's a label comp, which are fun, but, you know, it's just stuff off things they've released. So there is a version with just the first disc. This has the second disc, which is the one I was looking for. And the second disc has more... Um, I guess you would say unreleased. A lot of it's not unreleased now because a lot of it was advanced songs uh, from albums that haven't come out yet. And this came out in 2004, so all those have been released. But we've got uh, two unreleased songs from Blood Duster. I don't know how unreleased they are, but not re readily available. So we, they've got a Dwarves cover and then an original on here. Um, uh, Nat to Frost has an unreleased song on here, which is really fun. Uh, we've got, oh, the, a Destroyer 666 song titled Untitled that is an exclusive track is actually a song called The Dragon that's been released since then. Um, uh, a really interesting Mayhem song, Anno Vampire, which it says here's a rehearsal track from Wolf, the Wolf Lair Abyss Sessions. I've never heard it before, and honestly, it's not very good, <laughs> but... I mean, if you're if you're into mayhem, you want to hear everything. You might want to track this down. I don't know, man. If I if it's been made into something uh, later that I didn't know about, uh, feel free to let me know in the comments and call me out and call me a poser. I never I didn't recognize it at all. So uh, there's that. Uh, Green Carnation does a cover of Wicked Game from Chris Isaac. So Garage Geek, you better get on this. Uh, yeah, it's a faithful cover. If you like Reincarnation, you like that song, you'll like it. Um, they did it originally as like a, it was like a DVD bonus or something, but it was never on CD, so it's on here. So yeah, kind of a fun thing to pick up. wasn't too wasn't too expensive, so I'm happy to have it for the exclusive tracks. So that's that. All right, guys, that's it for today. Thanks, man. Thanks for hanging out with me and uh, sticking with me and watching my videos. I really appreciate it. And as always, CM Punk is a piss baby. Later.